the last lecture we have seen the how the boundary layer is developed and we have to define the Reynolds number to identify the flow is laminar or turbulent or transition so Reynolds number is defined as the inertia force upon viscous force and usually used to determine the flow is laminar or turbulent the inertia force is given by rho into v into lc and the viscous force is given by mu so this ratio becomes rho times v times lc divided by mu or is sometimes v divided by lc divided by mu where v is the velocity of the surrounding fluid lc is called as characteristic length and mu is called as kinematic viscosity in meter square per second and mu is dynamic viscosity in pascal second so in this case to identify the flow is laminar or turbulent so we define one number that is called as critical Reynolds number and if the Reynolds number is less than critical number then the flow will be identified as laminar and if the Reynolds number is greater than critical Reynolds number then the flow is identified as turbulent flow LC is called as characteristic length and the definition of a characteristic length for internal flow will be times area upon perimeter is 4 times area upon perimeter and the critical Reynolds number for the internal flow is 2300 let's consider here one pipe and for this pipe the fluid is flowing from the inside so the cross section area for this case is, is AC equals to pi by 4 multiplied by di square and the perimeter of this one is pi times di so if we use the definition of LC we have to substitute all this value is a 4 times pi by 4 multiplied by di square and divided by your perimeter is pi multiplied by di so this 4 and this 4 is cancelled pi is cancelled and the characteristic length in this case will be simply di that is the internal diameter of the pipe now if we consider there is an annulus form between the two pipe which has a radius equals to di and the outer pipe has a radius equals to di and the fluid is flowing through this section so if you want to use this definition we have a perimeter of this surface is get weighted and that perimeter will be equals to pi times di and the outer surface is also get weighted so that perimeter will be equals to pi times do so what we get is pi times di plus do this hollow cross section can be defined as pi by 4 area of the diameter square of outer pipe minus inner pipe so again if we put for the characteristic length LC we can write this as 4 times into pi by 4 now this term is di plus do and this is do square minus di I can write this as a square minus b square as a as a plus b that is do plus di multiplied by do minus di and the whole thing is divided by the perimeter that equals to pi times do plus di so this do plus di will be cancelled pi is cancelled and 4 is cancelled so characteristic length in this case is simply do minus di so in case of the pi annulus the characteristic length is do minus di now remember these definitions are only valid for internal flow now let's consider your air conditioning duct which is normally used in air conditioning it has a rectangular cross section of size a by b and the length equal to l so air will enter from this side which has a cross sectional area equals to a into b so in this case the cross sectional area ac equals to a multiplied by b and the perimeter of this wetted surface will be equals to 2 times of a plus b in this is again an internal flow so we can apply the same definition that is 4 times of cross sectional area upon perimeter so in this case the characteristic length will become 2 times of a b upon a plus b so this is how you can remember the internal flow internal flow the characteristic length the characteristic length is lc equals to 4 times ac upon perimeter for circular section it's the same as di for annular section it's a do minus di and for rectangular cross section is 2 times ab upon a plus b
In the case of external flow, the characteristic length is a dimension measured parallel to the direction of flow. Suppose we have a plate like this and in this case the flow is taking place to this dimension and suppose we say that this is the length of pipe then LC will be equals to your characteristic length and in the same pipe in the same plate if the flow will take place to this side which is the width of the plate then LC in this case will be equals to B. Similarly if the flow is taking place like this so the flow is taking place parallel to the diameter of this so the characteristic length will be equals to so definitions are very much straightforward in the case of internal flow it's a 4 upon AC upon perimeter and for external flow LC is the dimension measured parallel to the flow if the flow is taking place to this side the LC will be that side length if the flow is parallel to the width LC will be B in case of circular pipe LC will be equals to D now we have got a complete idea about the Reynolds number now we'll cl try to classify the Reynolds number classic classification in case of external flow the critical Reynolds number for external flow is given by 5 into 10 to the power 5 where the characteristic length is same as the dimension measured parallel to the direction of flow the RE is basically classified as the local Reynolds number or total Reynolds number or critical Reynolds number in case of local Reynolds number characteristic length is LC same as equals to X so critical local Reynolds number is given by REX equals to U infinity multiplied by X divided by nu in total Reynolds number which is basically used to compare with this critical Reynolds number the characteristic length LC is equals to L so total Reynolds number REL is given by U infinity multiplied by L divided by nu and the critical Reynolds number we have RE critical is 5 into 10 to the power 5 and is equals to U infinity multiplied by L critical that is the length up to which we can maintain a laminar flow divided by kinematic viscosity we want to define two more number one is called as Reynolds number and other is called as the Prandtl number to, to uh, let first introduce what is the thermal boundary layer thickness so thermal boundary layer is basically similar to the hydrodynamic boundary layer and a thermal boundary layer will be formed when a fluid at a specific temperature T infinity flows over a hot and cold surfaces in the case of hydrodynamic boundary layer there is a variation of viscosity there is a variation of velocity zero velocity at this point and the velocity will go on increasing it will be something parabolic like this whereas in the case of the thermal boundary layer the wall is maintained at temperature TW the surrounding fluid is cold so the wall temperature is at the nearest to the wall is same as TW that is called as the no slip condition and the temperature will go on decreasing and this temperature will come very close to 0.99 of U infinity so that region which encloses from the wall to this boundary is called as thermal boundary layer and outside is the temperature equals to T infinity so somewhat this profile is similar to this profile so TBL thickness delta T is defined th that this thickness is defined as the distance at which T minus TW that temperature at any distance T upon T infinity minus TW that is the difference of these two temperature will be close to 0.99 so TBL is that region in which the temperature change from the wall temperature to the temperature of the undisturbed fluid that is called as thermal boundary layer now the effect of the hydrodynamic boundary layer is the because the velocity at the wall is zero and the velocity will go on increasing from the wall to this distance that is called as hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness that is equals to delta H and in this case the viscosity will play the major role whereas in the case of thermal boundary layer kinematic viscosity thermal diffusivity alpha will play the major role alpha is defined as the value of K that is thermal conductivity divided by rho C the unit of thermal diffusivity and kinematic viscosity are same and identical this unit is also meter square per second and the unit of kinematic viscosity which plays the major role in the HPL is also meter square per second and the ratio of these two quantity is called as Prandtl number 
which relates the link between the thermal boundary layer and hydronomic boundary layer by the molecular diffusivity of heat that equals to alpha. So nu by alpha is meter square per second meter square per second is a dimensionless quantity m0 l0 t0. Since nu is also given by nu is given by mu by rho and alpha is given as k by rho c. So if we substitute this value we will get Prandtl number equals to nu by rho divided by k by rho c. So this row will cancel and you get mu into Cp by k. Now first case we consider for liquid metals in which case the Prandtl number is very very less than 1. Liquid metal may be put as liquid potential. So in this case if Prandtl number is less than 1 then we have the relation that equals to delta H by delta T and this is given by Pr to the power 1 by 3. In that case if Prandtl number is less than 1 your delta H will be less than delta T. So delta T will be the higher value and delta H will be smaller value. So hydronic boundary layer will be inside and the thermal boundary layer will be outside. So you can find here this velocity distribution. This velocity distribution varies from this point to up to delta H and then becomes similar to U infinity. And in case of thermal boundary layer the temperature will decrease from Tw to T infinity and it takes larger distance from the solid wall. So in this case the HBL is fully contained in TBL. So this one is case for liquid metals. Next we will consider for oil number will be in case of oil and water the Prandtl number is greater than 1. If the Prandtl number will be greater than 1 then using this equation of delta H by delta T we will find out Prandtl number is greater than 1. So delta H will be greater than delta T. That is the hydronic boundary layer thickness will be outside the thermal boundary layer thickness. In this case the thermal boundary layer is fully contained within the hydronomic boundary layer. So we can conclude when the Prandtl number is greater than 1 the heat diffuses much slower than the momentum flow and when the Prandtl number is less than 1 heat diffuses much faster than momentum flow. So this is a requirement in the nuclear power plant where we want a quick heat transfer and transfer. So up to now we have got a different you have got an idea about the Prandtl number and Reynolds number. Now we introduce the last number which controls the heat transfer in convection that is equals to Nusselt number. Nusselt number is represented by NU and is a dimensionless temperature gradient at the surface. From Nusselt number we can find out the heat transfer coefficient and it is given by Q convection by Q conduction. Convection heat transfer is given by A multiplied by H multiplied by delta T the difference between the surrounding fluid and the wall temperature and conduction heat transfer which is taking place near the wall is given by A multiplied by Kf divided by L where Kf is thermal conductivity of the fluid multiplied by delta T and get HL upon Kf. So we have the unit of this quantity equals to watt per meter square. H is watt per meter square Kelvin. L is in meter and K. The thermal conductivity is a watt per meter. We have M0, L0, T0. So Nusselt number is also a dimensionless number. Now definition of Nusselt number and the role of Nusselt number is to identify the, the heat is transferred more by conduction or more by convection. Lesser the value of Nusselt number, low, uh, higher will be the value of heat transfer by conduction and higher will be the value of Nusselt number, more will be the heat transferred by convection as compared to conduction. Nusselt number is basically similar to your Byatt number which was used in lump capacity analysis and is same given by H LC by K but remember the K for solid and in this case the K is for fluid. So in Nusselt number we are using the thermal conductivity of the fluid and in Byatt number we are using thermal conductivity of the solid. Now similar to Nusselt number we will also discuss we will discuss in detail the role of Nusselt number, the local Nusselt number and the total Nusselt number. So Nusselt number is given by H L C by K is the same definition L C characteristic length and the meaning of characteristic length is same as meaning of characteristic length is same as we have that is L C equals to 4 times area upon perimeter cross sectional area upon perimeter in case of internal flow and LC equals to L for external flow. So if you are using LC equals to X then it is called as local Nusselt number and local Nusselt number is given by H suffix X into X upon K and total Reynolds number total Nusselt number is given by H L by L by K. This HL is same as H average for forced convection whereas natural convection the value of H bar and HL will be different that will be discussed separately. For external flow only we have HL equals to H bar 
as such local nacelle number and troll renault number exist only for external flow and in case of internal flow the nozzle number is given by nu equals to h multiplied by d divided by k where we know that lc for pipe is d and lc in case of rectangular duct is twice ab upon a plus b and in case of hollow pipe we have do minus di so by this time we have generated a complete idea about the renault number prandtl number and the nozzle number now we have a certain idea about the correlations that are normally used in the case of external external flow your critical renault number is equals to 5 into 10 to the power 5 and lc is equals to l that is power flat plate so if your renault number is less than re critical it is treated as a laminar flow and if is a renault number is between 5 into 10 to the power 5 and less than 10 to the power 7 will be taken as laminar plus turbulent region so in case of laminar region we, uh, local nacelle number is given by 0 0.332 rex to the power 1 by 2 prandtl to the power 1 by 3 now this one is x and the null number is also 1x so this power will become hx is proportional to x to the power minus 0.5 in case of turbulent flow we have the coefficient is 0 0.0296 and renaults to the power x to the power 0.8 so this hx is 1 power of x and this is x to the power 0.8 so hx is proportional to x to the power point minus 0.2 so in this case if you double the length then the heat transfer will not be doubled rather than is proportional to x to the power minus 0 0.5 and in case of uh, turbulent flow hx is proportional to x to the power minus 0 0.2 now if you want to find out the average number then you can easily find out average number for laminar flow you just remember the constant 0.332 and divide this number by 1 by 2 so this number will become 0.664 multiplied by re and this time prefer to write rel to the power 1 by 2 prandtl to the power by 3 now, now same technique you can use in the case of turbulent flow so nozzle number will be equals to 0 0.0296 re power is 0.8 so divide this 0 0.0296 divided by 0.8 will get 0 0.037 so that is the equation basically used for the turbulent flow in case of laminar flow the coefficient of friction cf coefficient is given by 0.664 rx to the power minus 0.5 and if you want a cfl that is the average value of cfx which is equals to same as coefficient of drag so you divide this number again by re to the power 1 by 2 that will be 1.328 into rel to the power minus 0.5 whereas in the case of turbulent flow the local skin friction cfx is 0.59 rex to the power minus 0.2 and if you want to find out the total value of cfl or the coefficient of drag that will be 0 0.059 divided by rel to the power 0.8 will be equals to 0 0.074 rel to the power minus 0.2 so it is very easy to find out from local number to the average value you just divide this number by 1 by 2 that is the power of re 0 0.0296 divided by 0 0.8 is 0 0.037 0 0.059 divided by 0 0.8 is 0 0.074 0 0.664 divided by half is equal to 1.328 all these above equations are valid for uniform wall temperature but in case of uniform heat flux the local nozzle number is given by 0.453 rx to the power 0.8 so this constant will change instead of 0.332 it becomes 0.453 and instead of 0 0.0296 in case of turbulent flow it becomes 0 0.0308